Judgment in the matter of R on the application of Black versus Secretary of State for Justice. The issue in this appeal is whether the Crown is bound by the prohibition of smoking in most public places, enclosed public places, and workplaces, which I'll call the smoking ban, which was introduced by the Health Act 2006. It happens to arise in the context of a prisoner's complaint that the ban was not being properly enforced inside his state-run prison. But it affects everyone who works in, visits, or lives in premises owned or managed by central government. Mr. Black is serving an indeterminate sentence of imprisonment at Her Majesty's prison, Wymott. He is a non-smoker, with a number of health problems exacerbated by tobacco smoke. He has challenged the Secretary of State's refusal to provide confidential and anonymous access to the National Health Service smoke-free compliance line to prisoners. This would enable them to report breaches of the smoking ban to the environmental health officers who are responsible for enforcing it. Mr. Black succeeded in the High Court, which held that the smoking ban did bind the Crown. The Secretary of State appealed successfully to the Court of Appeal, which reversed the decision. Mr. Black now appeals to this court. The classic rule is that a statutory provision does not bind the Crown unless by express words or necessary implication. This is so well established that many Acts of Parliament will have been drafted and passed on this basis. Any decision of the Supreme Court to abolish or modify the rule would operate retrospectively. It should not, therefore, do so, although Parliament, perhaps with the assistance of the Law Commission, is urged to give careful consideration to the merits of abolishing the rule or reversing the presumption so that the Crown would be bound unless excluded expressly or by necessary implication. This is a rule of statutory interpretation, not an immunity. The goal of all statutory interpretation is to discover the intention of the legislation gathered from the words used in the statute in the light of their context and purpose. A necessary implication is one which necessarily follows from the express provisions of the statute construed in that way. The test is whether, in the light of the words used, their context and the purpose of the legislation, Parliament must have meant the Crown to be bound by the smoking ban. It's not enough that an act is intended for the public good, or that it would be even more beneficial for the public if the Crown were bound. It is not, however, necessary to show that the purpose of the legislation would be wholly frustrated if the Crown were not bound. It is enough if an important purpose of the statute would have been frustrated. And the court may take into account the extent to which the Crown is likely voluntarily to take action to achieve the same purpose. There is no hint in the government publications which preceded the Act that the Crown would not be bound by the smoking ban. It is intended to protect workers and visitors from the dangers of exposure to secondhand smoke when reliance on voluntary measures had not proved effective. Omitting Crown premises would deny statutory protection to many people. There are significant differences between the enforcement of the smoking ban by environmental health officers under the Act and a voluntary ban, which could only be enforced through far less effective proceedings brought by individuals. However, there are powerful indications in the language of the Act itself that the Crown is not to be bound by the ban. First, the Act does not say that the smoking ban binds the Crown, as it could easily have done. Second, this contrasts with similar statutes, such as the Health and Safety at Work Act, 1974, which contain express provisions on how and to what extent they apply to the Crown. Third, the Act itself has just such a provision in another part relating to the supervision and management of use of controlled drugs. Fourth, almost identical provision to that provision is also made in the statute enacting the Scottish equivalent to the smoking ban, which shortly preceded this Act. And finally, even if it were desirable for the smoking ban to bind the Crown, the legislation is quite workable without this. The Crown could do a great deal by voluntary action to fill the gap. Accordingly, 
The fact that where Parliament did mean to bind the Crown in the Act, it expressly said so and made tailored provision is conclusive of the question of its lack of intention in relation to the smoking ban. With considerable reluctance, therefore, the Supreme Court dismisses the appeal. The court will now adjourn.